All right. Uh, good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Hello. Assalamu alaikum to the world. Uh, I'm Abdul Samad Khan with uh, Act Global, and uh, as usual, we have got uh, two amazing guests uh, today with us uh, on this uh, platform. For our viewers, uh, those who are new to uh, watch to us today, uh, let me give you a quick background. This uh, Act Global is uh, actually a cup of tea. Um, it's a cup of tea which uh, you know we all are uh, cherishing our own cup of tea. Where uh, it used to be an alumni reunion of youth impact. So in eleven different cities of Pakistan, we used to have this uh, monthly alumni reunion. We used to have some internal external guest speakers, uh, some experts on different subjects who used to come and interact and used to teach something uh, nice, something good to our young alumni. But uh, thankfully, uh, COVID-19 gave us this opportunity uh, not just to engage the experts in Pakistan and the young people in Pakistan only, but also we got to learn and listen and uh, interact with the experts from across the world as well. So this cup of tea uh, has become global uh, because of COVID-19. Uh, this is our fifth uh, session in this series where we uh, invite some of uh, the amazing people across different continents uh, who have got uh, decades of their experience and knowledge, uh, who interact with the young people. And we also uh, get a wonderful uh, lineup of uh, audience uh, who come and ask their questions. So today uh, with me, I've got uh, these two amazing ladies, uh, you know, this is for the first time that I have uh, never met my these uh, guest speakers. So this is my first ever meeting with them. And uh, I'll just uh, quickly, you know, give you a background that how we got connected on my extreme right. I've got Salma. Uh, Salma and myself, we are part of a network, uh, which is uh, in our part is called Southeast Asia Leadership Academy. I'm part of it. And Salma, I guess she's part of Middle East uh, Leadership. Uh, academies network so this is a global leadership academy network so we are part of that uh, community through there we got connected uh, she does some amazing work for young people she'll be introducing more about herself and then we have got emmy in the middle emmy uh, i just uh, got connected with her yesterday uh, thanks to salma so i got to find that uh, emmy is uh, again doing something uh, amazing something very profound and uh, something that is helping young people. So she's an author, she's uh, an explorer, and she's a wonderful lady. So we'll be discovering more about Emmy as well. So right now, Emmy, you are in Egypt, is it right? Yes, that yeah. is correct. Wonderful. And uh, we have uh, Salma broadcasting from Abu Dhabi right now. Abu Dhabi, yes, yes. Wonderful, excellent. So. Over to Emmy. Would like to listen more about you, who you are, what do you do? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction, Samad. Um, so yes, my name is Amy, and I'm an author, as uh, Samad just mentioned. I've uh, read the book is for young adults, but I actually think uh, uh, grown-ups would like it as well. It's called Adventures in the Land of Astra. And it's um, about a boy that goes on an adventure to another world. But uh, my main drive behind writing this book was portraying a vision <clears throat> for an alternative future, an alternative world, a better world. Um, so through his adventures in this other world, we get to see um, that backdrop and how it works. Um, I'm currently writing a sequel. I blog on these issues, and uh, besides uh, my, uh, being an author, which is my 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 passion, I also do um, uh, work in the field of international development. So I've done a lot of work with the World Bank Group in uh, different areas, um, mainly education and employability. But that's um, where I also get a lot of my my inspiration on how how where how to move. Um, what what we need to do and uh, what's working and what's not. So I actually see the two things I'm doing as uh, um, interconnected in a way. 
And I, I'll stop there. Interesting, wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, this is uh, wonderful to have an author with us who's uh, recently written uh, this book, Adventures in the Land of Astra. And definitely, uh, while we uh, proceed ahead with this conversation, we'll be asking Emmy about uh, some more details and teasers about this book so that you know our audience can understand that what is in it for them. Wonderful. So, Salma. Oh. Hi, everyone. Thank you again for your introduction. And then I'm really excited to be on that platform, uh, especially that the youth is really, um, they really inspire me. And they, actually, they're my drive. You know, I was in a, in a job uh, in the government for 16 years, but in the last four years, they have been uh, the center of my attention. It's just because of their great heart and their great minds that they bring together to the table and the energy. And in the last four years, I was... Uh, uh, more concentrating on leadership development programs and involved in really writing up the content material for uh, leadership uh, for public and private schools at the national level, whether it was Jordan or Saudi Arabia and some areas in, in the region as part of the consultancy work that I used to do for a British company that I was uh, working for. But for this year, like 2020, I took a break. Just uh, I really wanted to do more volunteer work on uh, in the in the field of leadership and youth and uh, also executives because last year I acquired a certification from INSEAD on leadership coaching, and I'm interested actually in the three segments, whether it's the senior managers, executives, and also youth. And what I do as a as a volunteer work, I do coach. Uh, some of my uh, my colleagues' kids, you know, like up on age 13 up to 17. And this has been really rewarding for me. So I have this high interest leadership with youth all together. And uh, I'm very happy that um, I'm a trainer for the, you know, a trainer in that uh, field, as well as a coach and uh, also as a consultant. And I would like to pursue more on to that. And I'm based in Jordan. I just came here for a visit, you know, but it's a long visit. Right. Yeah. Uh, interesting. I hope you're not stuck in the airport and you're no. not. No, you know, no, not no, that, no, 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 no. I mean, Abu Dhabi is my second home. I was born, raised here, so it's my second home. It's just like uh, my father Wonderful. lives here. Yeah, yeah. That's good to know. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this is the uh, wonderful that uh, our focus today is the uh, uh, young people, the youth across the world. Like this is the 1.8 billion population on this earth who are uh, considered as young people. And uh, myself, uh, uh, as youth impact, we focus on a lot on youth leadership development. And then we have got two amazing guests uh, who have got some experience and expertise to help young people. So that's our focus, that's our topic, that's our theme today, that young minds, uh, bright eyes, for what? I mean, we are all, we all talk about, you know, passion and uh, motivation and purpose in the life. And a uh, lot of young people hear about these things in a lot of motivational sessions. And this is the time, especially during this uh, COVID-19 phase, when we have got, uh, gone through a lot of reflection, a uh, lot of introspection, where we have been able to uh, you know, think and discover about our own selves. So what for? Why uh, we need to know about ourselves? Why need to identify our potential? And what is the whole purpose of this uh, whole game of human potential, the young people, the youth leadership? So this is uh, what we'll be talking in detail about uh, uh, in today's session. Uh, but before that, I would like to have a quick uh, overview from our global uh, speakers from their vantage point of view uh, what how do they see this uh, covid-19 affecting their personal professional their social life uh, how do you see uh, you know uh, this world moving forward in your part uh, in your country how do you see the young people acting and reacting uh, against uh, this uh, pandemic so uh, any would you like to shed some light on uh, this pandemic uh, in, in your part of the world? Right. Um, yes, yes, sure. So um, uh, the COVID-19 is actually reaching a peak here in Egypt. The numbers are on the rise. 
Um, but let me let me first say for myself, uh, this I can see. You know, this is obviously a, a, a tragedy in some in some ways, and and it's causing a lot of anxiety in the world, and and in, in, impacting some people more than others. Um, in my case, I'm able to work from home, whether that's um, to my writing or my consulting work. So, and I know in, in many ways I'm, I'm privileged to be in that position and I know others are, are, are not able to work from home. So it's affecting them much, much more. Um, on, a personal, on a personal basis, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a very social person. I like interacting with people. Um, so this has not been the, the best, best kind of situation for me. However, I have found uh, the silver lining and I can see, I would say like young people, I think have younger people are the ones that have brought this, um, this, this opportunity to my, my to, to me. And that's num like, you can communicate. Now I'm in a situation where I have to reach out to people digitally. And I wouldn't always do that. I would, I'm the kind of person that would only communicate in person. And um, now I'm much more open because this is kind of you're forced to, to communicate um, with, with people digitally. So I've been reaching out. This is how I met Selma. Uh, so I was very lucky in that, that way. And I mean, this is this program here. So in the past, I've been um, working mostly in face-to-face, in face uh, uh, in a face-to-face -face context. So, so that's how it's been affecting me personally. And I can see with the youth, I mean, the youth are obviously, um, taking this, um, are, are dealing with it very well in the in the in the way that they are so uh, um, used to working online and doing everything online and very strong digital skills. So I think that's one way I can see the youth are, are, are doing. And actually, even brought that to my attention. <laughs> that's one thing. Um, then at the at the uh, the the. The, I also wanted to say um, I see this as an opportunity globally because I think uh, this has uh, take this ha this has been an opportunity or that let's say Mother Nature has forced us to stop and pause and look at the way we're living our lives and uh, whether that's the amount of transport that we do that's not necessary. Um, whether that's the uh, products that we're producing and consuming that are not necessary. And also, I think, highlighting the real heroes in this situation, whether they're the workers that are going out to um, the national health system or the people that are making our food and growing it and, I, and I, or, or, or bringing it to us. So these are the people that are risking their lives now. And I just see this as an opportunity in the sense that despite the tragic situation, it is bringing to the forefront people that are doing this. And youth are definitely at the forefront of that um, uh, in, 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 or in those three areas. Amazing. Uh, this is wonderful. I mean, uh, this is how I believe that anyone who consider himself or herself a positive, optimistic person sees this whole happening as an opportunity. Uh, opportunity to connect with more people, opportunity to share more, opportunity to be more considerate. And uh, yeah, definitely I can uh, resonate what, with what uh, Amy said that, you know, we in Pakistan have uh, also been experiencing the same thing. Like uh, I, I myself have been a very, uh, I'm kind of an outdoor uh, educator, being a trainer who uses mountains and deserts as a classroom. So I used to spend a lot of time in outdoor camping and uh, doing, uh, you know, that kind of adventure stuff. But, uh, you know, I've been forced to stay in my house and uh, just stay in front of the screen and connect with the people over here. So this was kind of a difficult thing for me. So I had to come out of my comfort zone and I had to challenge myself and uh, to interact and face and connect with people, which I never used to do that. So I think all of us, uh, we have got uh, a lot of uh, positive learning from this whole experience. So let's uh, listen to Salma, what she has got uh, from this whole uh, COVID-19. Yes, Salma. Uh, well, to add on to Amy's uh, talk and yours, actually, um, when the crisis really happened, um, you know, you don't really comprehend what's really happening. You, we thought all of us, it was a short time two weeks, yeah. three weeks, and things are just going to back, come back to normal. Now we're talking about a new normal. We're talking about a phase that has been now for almost four months. So uh, the mindset shifts from time to time because there's a realization of facts that come along. 
and you have the choice to see which fact you want to put into your mind and which one not. So when you really want to make a change, you know, because in times of crisis, it's like uh, it's either you need to adapt to change. You need to ask, am I able to adapt to that change or not? And how would I adapt? It's very important to, to ask that question. And what, what is required for me to adapt? So you have two ways. Either like you change the circumstances and this is beyond our control or you change your mindset. So for you to behave in a certain way and make a great uh, quality of your time along the day uh, and have the feeling of abundance and the power of choice than being constrained really uh, pushes you forward to, uh, to really uh, have more of what you really want to create of, uh, uh, out of your time. So the mindset could be the opportunity mindset, as Amy said, what's the opportunity of me doing something good today and not to look at the world news because it's really distracting and it's really, and, and your emotional state becomes on a negative side. You need to know what's the reality, but again, you need to push forward to see where are you from where you want to go. You cannot be disconnected. So it was a break and um, uh, it was a break and a reflection also because on a personal level, we, we, were, we had busy lives that were very stressful. We had so much on our shoulders, full responsibility, full on. We actually forgot ourselves. So, so you know, like uh, the forgotten self, and we are just like the self that is like on duty and doing duties and so forth. So it was a time to reflect of really what you really want to do. Where's your compass? Are you do achieving what you want to achieve? And social distancing really helped in a certain way to really understand uh, your real friendships and your real connections. And uh, we are more connected. I mean, we're more on the phone per day than any other time. And it's kind of weird. And you're in that cubicle and uh, all the connections have to happen. And if one day your internet is off, oh my God, it's just uh, unbearable. It's like, oh, I cannot live this way. So if you don't have a balcony or nice air or beautiful view, it, it's kind of crazy. So really you have to focus on your mindset so that you can behave in a certain way because when your mindset is in flow with your heart, you, you know, and you're doing the right things in the right uh, state, you're really in flow. And that's what, uh, um, uh, this is what I was trying to create. On a professional level, because I took this year off, I've created different masterminds, and, uh, which is like mastermind groups, which is more of an intellectual journey with my friends who are uh, on the same page like me, whether they're coaches or trainers or consultants. And we created like more of lab tests. So in my exploration journey, when I was in INSEAD last year, we were introduced to something called the immunity to change model. And uh, for example, one of my groups, it's like uh, I introduced this model to them and we work together with it. They introduced something else. So on the intellectual level, I'm, I'm already busy with that. What's really keeping me forward, like looking into those difficult times that I know that the time will eventually be over and there'll be a new normal and a new lifestyle. So what I'm really, uh, as a leadership uh, development consultant, I would like to really focus my ideas on the next period. How would it look like after, uh, after COVID-19? What kind of new breed of new leadership we would require? People are talking now about agile governments and we need to look into more into the leadership and refocus on that. When it comes to my community, what people are really doing, uh, the youth are like now helping out their parents at home, their other siblings studying online, you know, these little things. But the yeah. on the government level, they're really doing uh, like uh, competitions. And, uh, you know, Jordan has a very young and uh, educated uh, population. And at a leadership level, we have like a, a great focus on developing Jordan's youth. So uh, online, okay. you have competitions on TV. So there's an interaction. There's online free courses to, to, for like youth uh, to take for free. Um, uh, there's like they launched uh, just uh, a month ago the initiative on launching 1 million Arab coders initiative. So you get certified from home and you can work. And that's among the, uh, the youth community. And, you know, now it's like final exams. So students are really uh, studying online. But what, the real question is like the summer. What would they do if we're still in the lockdown? So okay. this is where we are. Interesting. Selma, uh, uh, you know, continue from where uh, what you said, that, you know, you work with young people and Jordan is a young nation. So um, my, my question to you is uh, about your work with youth, youth leaders. So what specific kind of work you do with youth? So what is that? Uh, you know, is it like a training program or you do some mentoring or coaching or uh, 
-hmm. Please uh, give us uh, some details about okay. the work. There, there's few umbrellas. You know, Jordan has a very good uh, infrastructure for youth because since 1999, uh, when yeah. the king uh, came to the throne, he really focused on youth as, as on, on, on top of, the, of his agenda. So the first thing he did was creating a King Abdullah Fund for Development to promote uh, all the programs uh, uh, programs for, for the Jordanian community, but with a priority with the, with, the, with the youth. And came along, there's a long series of, uh, of foundations uh, that came along to help the youth. And the last one in the last uh, four years is the Crown Prince Foundation, which is now the umbrella where all the collaboration for all the youth initiatives, even if it was individual or other entities or governmental entities, it kind of goes together at a higher level of collaboration together. Um, yes. So my work was through um, a consultancy firm, uh, a British one, four years ago, and we used to do it through CAFDI, which is the King Abdullah Fund for Development, and it was a national uh, the, uh, national leadership development program for all the governance uh, at, across the kingdom. So we used to train up to 2,000 students from the 12 governance. So from each governance, they will pick 100 to 200 students. And then over the summer, we'll do three full weeks on leadership. So the first week, it would be about leadership within. It's like knowing yourself, a full awareness of what you are. Second week would be it's you with the teams. How do you lead teams and how do you understand the roles? And then the third week would be how would you lead uh, within all the leadership models that are, are there. So I've been doing almost uh, the same work of leadership, but it depends on your audience. So if we're going to the private sector, I mean, private schools or the elite schools, uh, you yes. create a different curriculum depending on what the school really wants from those students. Even when we did the last national initiative on a national level, which is Haqq, uh, which, is, which means in Arabic to achieve, which is under the Crown Prince Foundation for grades nine and 10, uh, again, you really need to ask your client, what is the kind of leadership that you want to create? And we created like nine values. And according to these nine values, like in, in the next 10, 20 years, this is the kind of youth we want. So we took the well, nine values and we based our program on it. That's the I mean, kind this, of work I do. It seems uh, there's a lot of commitment from your top leadership in the country to yes. develop the young people. I mean, yes, amazing. big time, big time. Big we would learn, learn more from you uh, to implement these kind of initiatives in Pakistan as well. Uh, Emmy, uh, so we heard about this uh, wonderful book, I Didn't Get a Chance, uh, Adventures in the Land of Astra. So please uh, uh, educate us about what is in this book. Okay. Um, sorry, no. So it's, um, as I said, it's, it's this background for how we can create an, an alternative world, what this alternative world looks like. Because okay. when, where is this coming from? This is coming from, um, from my observation that there is, is, there's not much of a vision out there of what this, uh, an alternative world could look like. So we talk a lot about how the pollution, you know, pollution and climate change is a big problem. Uh, the way we eat and the way we produce our food is making us sick. Um, our medical uh, system is is um, is only preventative and it doesn't. Uh, sorry, is only um, is non-preventative. It works on the symptoms, and uh, also not not much act, not equal, no equal access to it. Um, education systems that are not teaching um, not teaching children how to become their best selves, uh, like in the inclusion of something like these leadership uh, workshops that Selma is talking about. That's usually not part of the curriculum. It's happening, but it, it's normally it's not normally there, and it, it requires quite a push. So all these th these problems are out there, and there are different uh, ways of, of uh, there are, there are. Um, Solutions may be targeted at one part of it, but the core of it is how we run the system. In, in my opinion, it's how you run the system. You can okay. uh, create charities, but uh, that, that's, that's not going to change the system. It's going to help some people, but not the whole system. So this, the, I, the, the, what I'm trying to portray in the book is a, a system that works differently where um, resources are, div are, are distributed in a slightly different way and also focused on what we really need as a society. Just to give an example, so for um, technology, 
most of our resources are focused on a lot of resources, let's say a majority is on what it is areas where you can make a lot of money and that a lot of the time is entertainment. That's I'm not saying entertainment isn't important, but I'm just saying, is that the right way to distribute your resources when you have um, diseases that people can't uh, 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 can't cure when you have something as basic as um, a lot of people in the world having to do jobs that they really don't, that you don't re need humans to do, given our techn the level of technology now, where it's cleaning public places. Um, but the reason we do, nobody is investing in this technology, is because, uh, that because you, can get, uh, you can get people at a very cheap price to do it for you. But, and I think, and this is where I see one of the opportunities actually in COVID-19, maybe now, so given how dangerous it is for people to, to, to mix, maybe now this will be a trigger for us to focus our technology efforts and our, our, our research and development on getting these, phys these, these jobs that require a lot of manual labor done by machines so that uh, um, uh, humans are safer. Um, because now with the pandemic, um, it's not just about that one human going out and doing a job that's quite physically tiring and boring. It's about how that, that one person could then affect everybody else. Um, so I, I, uh, I, it talks about uh, things like that. Um, and there's also uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the midst of it, it's about this, this boy that is, is becoming and, uh, you know, it turns that he's, he's a bit of a nerd and he turns into, he finds his people, he finds his tribe and uh, helps save this other world. Okay. Um, so that's, yeah, <laughs> I'll let you, I'll let you, uh, if you have any questions, you let, uh, I'll let you guide. Because I can go on and on about the book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I definitely don't, don't want to spoil the uh, in suspense in this book. I want the uh, readers or audience to go through the experience themselves. But I'm really curious that is it, uh, uh, what is the experience look like, feel like while reading this book? Is it like uh, Alice in a Wonderland and I'm into an imaginary world or it is, okay. or is it, is it uh, made it somewhere in the space or uh, high tech uh, world? So what kind of uh, environment look like? Right. What should I, yeah. Right. Um, okay. I, I would say most probably a split between those two things. So it, it's yeah. this other world, but it's not magical. Uh, it's it's uh, it's not like uh, it, there's only one magical thing that's happening in the book, and that's that the uh, here, the boy's guide, Dean, the name of the, the main character is Dean, is a cat, and okay. the cat speaks because that that comes from my uh, very strong belief that cats know much more than we think they do, uh, very oh. wise beings. But um, that's uh, that's that's the only thing that uh, would you wouldn't find in the real world. But otherwise, right. this other world is. Uh, um, there it's the, you might think it's magical but then you realize it's technology okay wow interesting yes. so i mean i definitely uh, would like to read this book so where can we find this book right so um it's it's available uh on on amazon uh you can order it there's a hard copy and a a, a soft copy an ebook yeah. and uh yes and then if you go to my website uh as you you've, you've uh, put up here uh, uh amyrafat.com um i've yeah. got the first two chapters on there and and okay. i had and i had said um i don't know if this is the right time to announce um, but I, uh, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm happy to give away yeah. um, uh, two copies to the first two people that that email me. So you can get my uh, contact details either on from my website or it's it's um, Amy at amyrefat.com. Uh, right, right. So you want two people to write you an email, and the first two emails will get a free copy. Is it right? Yeah. Yes. 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 I'll send oh, wow. a free copy to the first two. Wow. Yeah. This is wonderful, uh, generous uh, offer. And uh, do I qualify for that uh, yeah, free? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think to make it, yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you two want to read it. Yeah, um, but to make it fair then for the readers, I'll give yeah. I'll, I'll send you two and another two for the readers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's, that's, good. that's what I wanted at this time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Amy, you are getting some uh, fans from Youth Impact World as well. They're getting excited about this uh, free book offer. 
So okay, great. <laughs> yeah, moving forward, I mean, uh, we all, we uh, three of us, uh, we work with young people in different capacities. So, how how do you see the young people different or unique uh, today from your youth, from your age of uh, being young people? So, do you see any difference or any uniqueness or any anything? Uh, greater or anything that you know you actually regret in your youth is there any comparison between your young life and the young life today uh which doesn't mean i'm saying that you're not young anymore <laughs> i mean <laughs> don't uh, worry but, no offense uh, yeah so any any comments on on this comparison between your life and the life of young people today you you yeah. go first then. you go there's a huge difference. I mean, they're a digital generation. We're not. Um, they're yeah. just wiser. The environment is different. You're talking about 30 years ago, there was, were very limited resources. Yeah. We were only limited to, to the school environment and our teachers, and we used to follow guidelines. And even at home, there's guidelines and rules. Like, uh, And when yeah. somebody speaks up, uh, we, sh we should be like quiet, and that's uh, you know the behavior and the norm. Uh, yeah. Why, you know, so, and our level of awareness is not even as connected to the community was very far. Like, uh, we didn't do any volunteer work. Uh, we, we, was, we used to do like only uh, sports at school. So, yeah. and, all, and the stories of inspiration that we had were, were all like role models from our society. Nothing that we can see and read, you know, only through the newspaper at that time. Um, uh, and our, our focus was only on the degree academics you know you need to get grades and you need to go to a proper university and uh, um, get a good job and for us in jordan like getting a governmental job you're on the top of the line but now you look at our youth you you have abundance of resources whether the click of a button in your smartphone you get any any source of information you want it's much easier i mean i remember i used to go to school like uh, to the library to get books to do to work on my project and it would take me it will take me weeks now, just with few buttons here and there and some research, you do it in, in days. So that's, uh, that's you're talking about the time is different also. The school environment is different now. Now, when we go into schools, the schools are even built differently. The teachers are different. Uh, the way they approach the students is different. They have a lot of extra activities that are uh, working on the brain uh, uh, development and how and, and the personality and how can you speak up and you know like when you have any young person who comes into a crowd you, automatically you give the attention to to that young person and and you know usually they're outspoken and they're heard because they know they're going to be heard so they have that attention and you know even nowadays like in in my country in the last 20 years our king wrote uh, discussion papers uh, about um, uh, making our democratic system work for all Jordanians and involving the youth and, uh, and active citizenship and knowing you're right. And it created like, you know, His Majesty would sit with all these different uh, youth groups, whether university students or even students uh, um, in their high school, uh, to discuss those discussion papers. So there's a discussion and a dialogue and their input is involved. I don't remember when I was in school here I was called into any other meeting to really discuss the matters of a community. Like nowadays here in UAE, they have youth councils where they do town hall meetings and, and under this youth council, they speak up and they speak to officials and they can ask them about anything. And now volunteerism is at its high, you know? So totally different, You're totally different. I mean, I learned from my nephew who's 10 years old, trust me. Yeah. Uh, especially yeah. when it comes to the smartphones, he comes, tells me about shortcuts yeah. I, I, and I say they're wiser. They're wiser. Same here. Same here. Absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 while listening to you, I can see all the positivity coming from uh, your side where, when you speak at the young people. And uh, all the young people listening over here watching this session, I think uh, this is uh, an invitation for them as well uh, to exploit and uh, use or capitalize on these opportunities which we uh, people never had in our uh, school or college or university life. And this yeah. is a great responsibility on the shoulders of young people. So, Amy, how does this uh, your young world is uh, different from what you see today? Um, so, in addition to everything, Salma says definitely, um, yeah, they're, 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 they're treated differently. Uh, but I would say that's um, the better schools. There are still, I think, uh, schools that um, yeah. are, are, are not 
giving um, um, uh, children and, and young people that that, uh, that, that that exposure and that attention. Uh, but it's yeah. getting there with more people like Senla doing pushing for the kind of the leadership workshop she's doing. We're getting there. Um, I would say also the um, challenges are looming closer. So something like climate change, that's looming closer. And I, I think this is probably one of the catalysts why you've got so many young people, people as young as like Greta Thunberg with her movement, um, really yeah. speaking up about this. I, I don't remember my generation uh, speaking up about issues like that at such a young age. Yeah. And, and I think it's probably because they can see it, it's it, this is this is really serious. We're not going to have a planet. Um, so there's there's that and the technology definitely, as uh, Sam was saying. Like yeah, you it's, uh, we learn from them. I'm learning from them. Uh, and this interconnectivity, this global interconnectivity, and movements like yeah. that on climate change, where youth can come together from all over the globe and and start movements um, together. Um, I, I'd say, and with the technology, it's, it's probably a double-edged sword. Um, so I think it's great, but I think it's also important to um, um, to make sure that, uh, first of all, children and then young people have the physical interaction as well. That's also very yeah. important. Face-to-face -face attention is, is, is still very important. So, and I think we should utilize technology to complement. Um, that's interesting. Mm. Yeah, interesting. It's, it's very important that you know we sh shouldn't we shouldn't uh, uh, get stuck into this digital connectivity all the time. There is a whole beautiful world out there uh, where people need a physical human connection. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Um, you know, I have uh, uh, got this uh, interesting game for you, ladies. Are you uh, ready to play with me? I call it thumbs up. So what we have to do, we have to uh, continue on the same conversation. Uh, we are comparing our life, our young life with the young life today. So uh, in this comparison, I'll be posting one statement at a time. So this statement will come and uh, it will be displayed on the screen. So if you agree with that statement, so you have to show me come up. And if you do not agree or if you disagree, uh, you know, you do thumbs down. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is there, with, is it, there's is yeah. there an option of maybe? Uh, okay, we'll In see. Between. We'll see. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Uh, okay, let's let's start with this first uh, point. We already had some discussion. Your youth life was way better than that of today's youth. Mm, not really one. not really no uh, no. Uh -huh. no okay so yeah i mean uh, um i mean maybe in some ways not not completely no i think there's much there's much well, more going on now but in some ways so i'm gonna have to do the middle one yeah that okay okay all right <laughs> no, no. Uh, I, I, I agree with you ladies uh, i'm also somewhere in the middle you know over here a lot of reasons, but let's move forward. Next part. So youth today are practical rather being daydreamers. Yeah, I believe that. that. Yeah, I believe um, that. So, uh, um, the, um, right? Yeah. Uh, I so, can't, oh, okay, here. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Again, can I? I just want to uh, explain my my. So again, in the middle, because I think they're both. I yeah. think youth, are, so maybe a long time ago, you just got daydreamers. They're definitely practical. I agree, I agree with both of you. But they're also daydreamers as in they, they, they have a vision for what, what could be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So daydreaming in a positive sense, like having a vision or having a dream in their life. That's very nice. I mean, but here, generally, it's more of like uh, impractical people who just oh. dream, all the time, but they do not act. They do not take oh, any okay, action. Okay. 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Wonderful. So same. Same is uh, my side when I interact with yeah. a lot of young people. Yeah. I yeah. see a lot of practical. Uh, though it has its own downside at times, but uh, that's not our point of conversation at this stage. Youth today are more informed and aware than your time. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Of course. For sure. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I think yeah, social media. 
Um, yeah, let's move forward. You today have high level of empathy, compassion, and love today. I think so, because they're aware. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the ones I met, yes, the ones I've met, definitely. But I, 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 again, I want to give a disclaimer there on one thing. I think because I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't say that they're more empathetic and compassionate than the youth of 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 my generation. Um, yeah. But they they are, yeah. And, and I, I think technology also isolates them a little bit. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's where, yeah. Concern. Yeah, I mean, that's my concern. You know, uh, where. Uh, we become more materialistic, we become more uh, success-oriented, career-oriented, you know, our professional goals, our challenges, the sense of com competition in this world, uh, and then this technology thing. When all these factors added into a young life, uh, that's where, you know, I feel that empathy part sometimes or compassion part or the love part of your life, sometimes it gets diluted. So that's my one of my concerns uh, uh, for young actually, people. Yes. Actually, Salman. actually, Abdul Samad, when this statement came out, the only people that I thought about is the youth that are in my govern in the governance, like they have less resources. So this yeah. really applies a lot. But in the capital, it's the it's the opposite, as as Amy has mentioned. So really, yes. it's like we cannot generalize, but uh, overall, that's the case. Okay, wonderful, interesting. <laughs> Next statement. Today's young people are more empowered and progressive than your time. For sure. Yeah. They have the right infrastructure from the government, from everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. No, yeah. no. I, I, I have two thumbs up for that. Yeah. Two, not one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's interesting. I mean, all these amazing stories we are listening, uh, we just, uh, I mean, just mentioned about this young girl who stood up in the United Nations and challenged all the leaders. Uh, I forget her name, unfortunately. Greta Thunberg? Yeah, that exactly. One? yeah, exactly. I mean, the climate change uh, advocate. I mean, at such a young age, how uh, amazing to uh, listen and watch these young people uh, raising their voices and creating uh, social change. Uh, interesting. Next question. You find more humanity in connection to today's young people. Mm. Hmm. In between. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think yeah, as some some will say, yeah, again, you wouldn't be able to generalize on this one. Maybe it depends on where they are, their resources. Yes. Mm. You know, in interesting. Uh, this is the this is the, a a point to ponder for the young audience who are listening to this conversation. You know, all the three four points we had discussed, we had no um, hesitance uh, in raising the thumbs up, and this is where you know when this point came in our uh, two guest speakers in two different continents. They just uh, got into the reflection or thinking more. And this is a question to the young people that, are we missing on humanity in our connection? If yes, this is the time. Uh, this is where we need to focus more on you know, building those human connections. Right, so next question. What is the biggest challenge of today's young people? Lack of sense of direction or lack of economic opportunity. So, if you think lack of sense of direction comes up, if you think lack of economic opportunity comes down. What's the second one? Sorry, Abdul Samad, I didn't hear it. Economic, this is oh, lack oh, of right. economic opportunities. Um, economic opportunities. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And they have like jobs. It's the most challenging thing in the Arab world, really finding jobs for the youth. I mean, the Arab Spring was all about that. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. So. And, and I think that is then leading them to feel like they have a lack of a sense of direction because if you feel like you can't contribute, okay, what do you do? Hmm. But, okay, let's so ask same question, same question to the audience. So, uh, the young people listening out there. So what do you think? What is the biggest challenge for you as a young people today? Uh, lack of sense of direction, the young people in your network, in your communities, or the young people, they lack on economic development opportunities. So I've got this uh, one response uh, from Hashim, but uh, I'm not going to post a lot. So Hashim says it's direction. And 
actually, you know, actually, if yes. I may say, Abdul uh, Abdul Samad, lack of sense yes. of direction is really uh, the seed for you to know where you're heading. So once you know where you're heading and you know your meaning and your purpose and what you are for, you tend to actually choose the economic opportunities that fit you very well and you're aligned. So it's kind yes. of it's a two way thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I just want interlinked, interlinked. So we have got someone saying economic opportunities for sure. Atif says direction. So uh, Amit Chupai says lack of economic opportunities. I mean, uh, Salma, I think you have got the right answer. So they are interlinked, interconnected, because you know when they are young, they are into the age of uh, studies, like school, college. This is the time where they focus more on their self-awareness, understanding exactly. their own self. And that's exactly. where they focus uh, to know, know more about yourself, your potential, your talent, your strengths, your weaknesses. And then there comes a time when you canalize all your potential to the economic and social development opportunities for yourself and for the community. Do you um, agree with this? I agree with this, and if I may say yeah. that we actually really uh, focus on values because values yeah. is really the core. So yeah. uh, for you to be more in touch with your human side and be fully aligned, that's yeah. the core of our work. Interesting, wonderful. Yeah. So I think this is my last question for this uh, uh, thumbs game, and this is a very basic debate. You it's, as an it's both. Okay. It's both. Right, right. I want to hear more about it. Oh. It's, I mean, it's both because, of course, they are an opportunity for, for any growth. And they bring a great energy to everything they put their hands on. And they're a challenge. It's like uh, they, they are challenged and we are challenged. You know, like if I think of myself as a government or as a country, uh, I need to really address their challenges. because, And you cannot address all the challenges. So this is where we are. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, um, I, that I agree both. Yeah, that I think huge opportunity. I mean, okay, so I'll say in, in, uh, in on two levels. So, being a youth yourself is an opportunity and is a challenge because the challenge is you've got to find your way, you've got to find your direction, you've got to find your economic opportunity. Um, and at the same time, I mean, look at all that potential to grow and your whole life ahead of you. And then if we look at it from uh, uh, the perspective of society, as Sena was saying, then obviously uh, it's an opportunity, it's potential to, to, to it's, it's human resources, human power. Um, but if you don't fulfill the, uh, the needs and um, prep them to be able to take on the challenges of society, then, then, then it becomes more of a problem. But not, not, they're not a problem in themselves, but if you haven't, uh, interesting. You know, uh, we are uh, one of those countries with a very high uh, youth population, like uh, 120 million people in this country who are under the age of thir uh, 30. And uh, I always uh, uh, tell the people in the government, in the, the decision makers that, you know, our biggest strategic asset is not nuclear bombs, it's the young people. And it can be disastrous as a nuclear bomb if we do not, you know, channelize this energy. And it can be the most important, most strategic asset for us as a country and as a world. Uh, if as the leaders or the decision makers, we do not channelize this energy. But, you know, what a young person can do with their young life, with this potential, with this opportunity, how they can develop their uh, sense of purpose or sense of meaning in their own life. Do you have do you guys have any, any practical tips or any practical tools that how young people can you know uh, convert this challenge into an opportunity? Um, okay, uh, shall I go? Uh, um, yes, sure. uh, um, so um, I think the 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 uh, I'm gonna. The economic opportunity, the idea of economic opportunity and direction. Right. I, I agree with what Selma said earlier, and I, I think you as well, Selma, that you need the direction. And I think I saw some uh, some people, participants, also talk about this. You yeah. you need direction, and then you go for the economic opportunity. When you go the other way around, 
I think things get mixed up and you're you're in an upside down life. Um, yeah. You choose your direction, you find your purpose, and you, when you because if you follow your your interests, you follow your enthusiasm, you follow what makes you um, excited, what gets you passionate, um, yeah. and you follow that, you will find your purpose. It might take some time. And it might not initially be clear how on earth you're going to make an income that way. Um, so for yeah. me, for example, I, I really, I didn't, when I started writing, I had a full-time job and um, I, I did not see myself as becoming a, an author and then you know, writing more and more, more professionally. But I just picked, I just followed the urge. I had this strong urge to write a story. So I followed it. And I think that has led, one thing has led to another where I am now connected to more people that are interested in similar things. I'm, I give talks to youth that are interested in, um, in, in coming up with ideas for the future. And that gives me a lot of in, more, even more enthusiasm. So it, it's Agreed. not like I could see that from the very beginning. You, you follow one step at a time, and then the economic opportunities um, start becoming uh, more apparent. And um, what, one thing on this, I think, uh, it helped me. Um, you, uh, some people, some of the people we have online might think, I, I don't have many interests. And, and that happened. And I, I, I was at a stage once where I'm like, I'm not, I'm not feeling excited about anything. Mm. Um, that could be that you're just feeling, uh, you know, boggled down, overwhelmed by a lot of energy around you. And it's good to take a break, take a step back. And if you can access a life coach, I would highly, highly recommend that because I've worked with a couple of life coaches when I've been yeah. in um, situations like that. And they've really, really helped me um, really dig deeper and find out what I'd like to do. And it can start off with some baby step something that you're enthusiastic about. Um, and then you take it from there. Um, so that would be my advice for direction and, and, and finding your purpose. Interesting. Uh, Emmy, uh, my question uh, to you again. Uh, do you think uh, your book can help the young readers to find out some answers in their minds and in their hearts? Do you think there is some stuff um, here? So uh, I think what, what the book uh, does is opens up your mind, if you are of the mindset of, okay, I want to do something in the world, I'd really like to have an impact, that, that mindset, I'd like to make a difference. I yeah. think what the book does is, uh, this is my aspiration at least, you know, I'm the author, so I know, uh, is that it will inspire uh, the reader to say, oh, okay, that there, there is this vision, actually, why, let me, I, there's a vision, maybe I could take some action to move towards that vision. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so it invites them to think and reflect, but definitely it all depends on them to take an action. Uh, to take the action. Much. Salma, where to start? What's the first oh. practical step? Well, um, you see, uh, everybody is driven by purpose. And I'll tell you about, uh, uh, there's like, uh, I have two steps that uh, I, sh I would share with you from, the, from a coaching perspective. But you know, everybody has a driven uh, is driven by purpose. You really embody it, whether you know it or you don't know it. Then, when you do things, you tend to know what is really close to your heart, and it's really the essence of your being. What really gets you out of your bed every morning to do? It's really where you have the passion for. Like Amy had the urge to write her book, and and this is where she is now with her book, uh, talking yeah. about youth and and taking a different uh, turn into that. Uh, you see, um, a life purpose is really uh, the essence of who you want to be and for what and for whom. And, um, and you know, like the Coaching uh, Training Institute uh, did like a statement that most of the coaches that, are, that graduate from CTI, they use it, which is like really the essence of your beings. And uh, the coaches that always talk to me, when we stumble with, with, with some words, they always remind me of who they are. So there's like one statement that everybody could just write and then figure out. And how do you do that? Uh, the statement would be like, um, let's say my friend's uh, life purpose, who I took this from her, from uh, her name is Anami from Belgium. She says, I am the spark who lights the fireworks in people's lives. 
So the statement from CTI, it's like, I am, you write I am, and then you think of a metaphor. So the met metaphor here is the spark. And then you write who is or does. And what, what do you want to put after that is the essence of who you want to be. So for her, it's like she is the spark who lights the fireworks in the people's lives. So how can you do that? Uh, you put the statement and then you look at yourself in the last week. You look at all the 10 top things that you have done. You just write them down, things that you have done. And then you ask yourself, you, which where, where you're spending more, most of the time on. And you ask yourself, is this adding to the purpose of my life? And then you can create your statement. Um, there's another a tool also tip from Berkeley Wellbeing Institute. They say there's a five-step approach to write your life purpose. And Good. it's like finding out what drives you, finding out what energizes you, what are you willing to sacrifice for, who you want to help, and how do you want to help. So, the, and then, of course, also talking about Amy, um, there's a, the Japanese I, I, old ideology, ikigai, which is yeah. basically your essence of being. So you really, you follow your passion, but you really need to find that, is it a profession that you have? Is it the world that the world needs it? And if you can make money out of it, so if, if yeah. the four circles come in together, um, yeah. they really bring the, the essence of your being, of why you really get up in the morning and you go and do whatever you want to do. So um, yeah. just observe what you do along the week and where you spend the time and then take it and see your essence. And it's also connected to your values. You also touch it with your core values. And, so, and so that you're, trying, you're trying to say, Salma, that your past week or last 10 days they mm. actually tell you that you're, where your life is heading to? Is it what yes, you're saying? But, yeah, because if yeah. you spend the last 10 days or the last week in things that are not really feeding into your purpose, you're really wasting your time. You're not aligned. You don't, you're, you're, you're away from your compass. You, and this is the lack of direction. So when people tell you, when a person tells you, I, I lack direction or I don't know where to go, it's basically because you're doing things and you're spending your focus and your energy and your mind into something that is not really serving you. So you need to ask, what's really serving me now? Is this even talking to, uh, you know, to friends or connections, whatever it is, or you're spending time even with a parent. It's like, yeah. where are you spending your time with? And what are you doing with that time? Because we create the quality of our life and it's, it's, it's in the power of our choices. So, yeah. if, you know, like when we have abundance of that, we're not constrained. It's, it's about you. It's your mindset. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I mean, I definitely would love to hear more about you uh, girls, but the point is uh, we are I know. Just left yeah, yeah. more minutes. And, uh, and, you know, the best thing is that uh, uh, the young people uh, listen to a lot of motivational speakers, uh, but uh, very few of them tell uh, them about the practical steps. And thank you very much uh, to both of you where we, we talked about those real practical action points where the young people can start immediately and can uh, you know uh, instantly start working on something? And I like this idea of the statement. That one statement. Uh, I'm sorry, you want to say something? I actually use a tool, which, which is my mind mapping tool, because I'm dyslexic, kind of. So I work with figures and pictures. So uh, you know, and I use it well, a lot with youth. Once you know what you like, what you dislike, what you hate, what you love, uh, yeah. what you stand for, what you don't stand for, and you you build your tree around it, you kind of get your being also. I can yeah. share this with you on an email that they can do on their own and then I can basically speak to any of them who would like to pursue what, what kind of uh, purpose they want to uh, prevail. I'll be more than happy to do so. That, that's a great offer and I think Salma, we can talk about it, having you online uh, in a different session where you do, you do a workshop, a quick yeah. workshop for young yeah. people. I would love to. Yes, yes. Very that's much a great so. offer. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very much sure. for this. Uh, no uh, problem. So, Emmy, uh, last two minutes. So, do you have anything, uh, any conclusive uh, message for the young people? Yes, um, yes. I, I mean, I, first of all, it's been great to being on on here and the energy. And I wanted to say that I'm uh, I'm writing my my the sequel to this book, and the way I'd like to do it this time is a bit different. I'd like to engage the youth actually while I'm writing it. Because what I'm doing this time with the sequel is 
um, looking at how we might uh, go ahead with this, create this world here. Um, so I'm looking for ideas. So again, um, maybe, maybe Samad, if you could put up my, my website again so they can contact me. Um, if you want to contact me, uh, have any ideas on that, um, engage with me, I would... Uh, I would I'd be very open to that and waiting for emails for the, the two freebies. Wonderful. So uh, to the audience who joined us later, uh, let me you know share this great news that Emmy has this uh, offer for two of the audience who, are, who joined us today. Uh, if you go and find emmyrefat.com and uh, find her email, send her your email, tell her that you know you have attended her session at Youth Impact. So first two emails will get two copies uh, from Emmy. Wow, wonderful. So Salma, your last message concluding remark, 30 seconds. Uh, okay, uh, you know, self-education yeah. is really key. So you can't stay one day without learning something new, one step at a time. So really have this habit of learning, 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 and put yeah. all the positive words because it really plays with our minds. And your destiny is really determined by your decisions. And I would like to, ha to, to end it with a quote from my colleague, Meet Shutterfield. We facilitated in S Sri Lanka in Sila last January. And he wrote this, and I really, it really inspired me. And I think it will inspire everybody. Yeah. Our stay on this earth is short. Our roles will be dis dispensable. My impact is up to me. I may choose to be a passing shadow, or I may choose to make a difference. So thank wow. you. Thank you. I think this is just very powerful, and uh, I don't have any anything to say to conclude. And I just want to thank uh, both of you, Amy and Selma, thank for you. taking thank the time. You. I can definitely thank see that we need you guys uh, uh, to educate our young people. So definitely, I'll coming back to you again for more time. It's well, our pleasure.